welcome to this episode of Story and Things, a podcast where we review stories. And we talk about other things, but still relating to stories. Exactly. I'm your host, Chelly. And I'm your host, Yahida. And we're continuing a trend today. I didn't realize that we were doing a trend because Chelly and I, we record in batches. Yeah. And it just hit me. We've been doing a lot of sequels. And you know what? It's contrary to what you wanted. You didn't want to do sequels. I in didn't want to do sequel. Oh no, I didn't want to do series. Series or anything that's a continuation. Only because I have this thing where even if I don't like the story, I have to know how it ends. Yeah, me too. My sister hates that I do that because she thinks I just hate watch and hate read things. I mean, mm, kind of true though. True, but when I start something, I do want to see how it ends, mm-hmm. even if it's just me reading the last chapter. Oh me. Do you remember <laughs> that time in college? We didn't go to the same college, by the way, but you came to visit me and we watched the first episode of Secret Life of the American <laughs> Teenager. It's the last episode, literally just the first and last episode. And we were just like, whoa, why? <laughs> Watch the whole thing, bitch. <laughs> nah. Damn, that was funny though. We should do that. We should do that again. Yeah, we should just watch the, f- the first episode of a series and then the last one. Oh my god, we we'll do that with Supernatural, but I know everything about that show, so does it count? But not the last episode. Not yet. Damn. How do you feel about Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles? Jensen Ackles, my not voice? being besties anymore. Don't even. You know that's a sensitive topic. For I want to know though. Tell me. It makes me feel really sad because obviously. They had done this project for so many years and they were so close to the point where they actually bought houses next to each other. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what happened that all of a sudden, maybe they had had enough, you know, after so many years. I mean, it makes sense why you need a break. Yeah, exactly. Especially if you spend so much time together. Mm -hmm. I understand the need for a break, but it does break my heart because I really loved their relationship together. They were like brothers, IRL, but now they're like possibly strangers dare i say i don't actually know them so i don't know well today i hope this is like a just like a little lull like they just need a break and that's okay that's okay well today you broke the news to me that drake and josh aren't close either no they're not close apparently josh went on a podcast and he mentioned that they really hadn't talked for the last decade Oh. Like, maybe you talk as acquaintances, but not but that's as it. besties. Because they talked online sometimes, but mm-hmm. it was probably just online and that was it. Yeah, so when Drake made that whole big deal about not being invited to the wedding, it was like, well, you don't actually... talk, bitch. Yeah, which makes total sense. You don't actually talk, so why mm-hmm. are you so upset? Yeah, why are you so upset with me? <laughs> oh, nice eat flat there. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, today. Okay, Charlie Puth. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that That's video? A good one. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. We're a little buzzed. <laughs> today, we are going to be talking about a second book to the Shatter Me series. Mm-hmm. Which um, I definitely recommend for you to pause right and now. go listen to our first episode of the series go because we did shatter me mm-hmm. um the second book is called unravel me mm-hmm. by tahere mafi tahara mafi tahara mafi mm-hmm. i am so excited to talk about this book like yahira said to go read or listen to this book right now so i do recommend it but we are going to give a spoiler free summary mm-hmm. and afterwards after the spoiler free summary we're going to guess what we think about it because we don't know. We're going to guess what the other person thinks yes. about it because we decided that we're going to keep that a secret. Lips are sealed. Yeah. But after that, we are going to have a spoiler zone of just us talking. So if you want to be part of that and be in the know, go read the book right now. Go. But go ahead, Yahira. Why don't you read the summary of Shatter Me and also Unravel Me? All right. So I'm just going to recap the first book, okay? So Juliet Farrar's has a lethal touch. She lives in a dystopian world where there are people with special abilities, but those without powers have deemed them far too dangerous. So many of them are tortured and or killed by the reestablishment. Aaron Warner is leading the reestablishment and he offers Juliet the chance to become a weapon for them, but she ends up escaping with Adam instead. She's not interested in hurting people, so at the end of book one, she ends up at Omega Point, which is a safe place for people with abilities like her, and this group plans to combat the reestablishment. 
So now a summary for Unravel Me. In Unravel Me, Julia is fighting alongside Omega Point in hopes to take down the reestablishment, which is actually led by Paris Anderson, who is Warner's father. But more importantly than fighting the reestablishment, Julia is trying to understand how both Adam and Warner are immune to her lethal touch. Damn, dude. That summary hits. That's a good summary. Thank you. So that is your spoiler-free summary. If mm-hmm. that sounds interesting to you, we both recommend for you to go. Go read it now. Go. Go, go. now. Are you back? Thank Welcome you. back. Welcome back. If you didn't want to read it, you lied to us. But it's <laughs> And okay. I'm offended. I'll forgive you this once, but not twice. So we are going to talk about spoilers. So if you don't want to hear spoilers, leave. But then come back later. <laughs> So now we will guess how the other person feels. I'm going to go ahead and guess how Chelly would rate this book. Mm. And I don't know Chelly as much as I think I do sometimes. Because if mm. you've been listening to us, mm-hmm. she can be really unpredictable Thank you. with her ratings. Thank you. Sometimes something will have a trope that you don't like, but you'll still rate it pretty decently. Thank you. I don't know why, but you do. So touching your head, I'm going to guess what you would give well, this touch book. my heart. Oh, okay. Oh, kind, oh. Of, kind of intimate, but okay. Thank you. I am going to guess that you would rate this book somewhere between a 3.78 to a 4.36. Mm. Mm, weird that you didn't say 3.77. Mm. But I mean, I won't question it. Wait, why? Are you saying I that? No, it's just going to work. It's just going to work. Is it a 3.77? Is that what well, you're saying? Well, okay, okay. I'm not going to answer that. No comment. <laughs> Suddenly I can't hear. <laughs> we will reveal our actual ratings at the end. So please stay tuned. Okay, but you know what? You don't have to stay tuned for much longer because I know Yahira. Do you? We've been friends. Not really. We, <laughs> yeah. we keep joking about don't that. Don't say that. <laughs> They're going to think you're serious. We've been friends for 10 long years. A whole decade. Through the good, through the bad, we have been there for each other. Mm-hmm. I love you so much. I love you too. And I know, you know. that you like shatter me. Mm. As the entire, you've read everything. I literally you after have read we, everything. Not you know, no spoilers or anything. Yeah. But after we filmed Shattered Me, I read the entire series. Not even a week. No, it didn't even take me a week. Yeah. I read it like that. And you loved it. And I know you loved it. Do I? I know you love Do I? You love morally gray characters, Aaron Warner. You hate bitches, Adam. So <laughs> what? I feel like you gave Those this were story. her words, not I mine. I feel like you gave this story. <laughs> You can't just call him a bitch. (laughs) Oh, I mean, you can because you just did. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Call it as I see it. Okay. Keep going. Sorry. You gave this story a five out of five. Hmm. And you don't have to deny it. I will accept you. You're looking at my eyes pretty intently. So you see a five in there? Yeah. (laughs) You actually see a five. Okay. Thank you. I'm not wrong. And if I am wrong, no, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> She's wrong, actually. <laughs> Either a five or maybe a 4.896, but you know. <laughs> that's still, oh. re- that's oh. still really high. <laughs> okay. When, when have you become the queen of rounding? <laughs> but, <laughs> let's go it ahead. It would be a 4.9. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a five if you round to the whole number. Okay. So. Okay. I what? love this. I love this discussion. I Me love too. that we started just guessing what the other person would rate it. Me too. I think it's fun. It is fun. And you know what? Let's not wait any longer. Okay. Why let's... don't we start and talk about the character tropes? Specifically, the main one. <laughs> do, do you, should we say love? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say something? I'll admit it. <laughs> Go ahead. Admit it, Telly. <laughs> we filmed this once and I forgot to click record. But we didn't get very far. But we did get to this part. (laughs) And I did say this right. Yahira said it wrong the first time. What is the main... (laughs) What is the main trope from this story? (laughs) Should we say at the same time? On the count of three? Yeah. Totally unprompted. Go ahead. Three, two, one. Love Love triangle. triangle. Yeah, that's not what you said. That's not what you said. I did. You said enemies to lovers. Stop putting words in my mouth (laughs) rude of you so it's a love triangle it's a hella love triangle between juliet which is she's at the top yeah and then warner's on the left of the corner and then adam is oh wait hold on a gap Uh, a gap miles apart 
I was on the other side. I don't know why you're saying that. I don't know. There's no miles in this yes, book. Yes, there is. No, yes, no. there is. As Sharpay said, you know we what? are miles and miles and miles apart. You know what? We can argue about that later once okay. we get to that part. Okay, I'm ready. But let's go ahead and start with the characters. Okay. So let's start with Juliet. And I do want to kind of briefly go through what happened in the first book. Juliet is a character who's been through a lot. Yep. And she has this lethal touch where if she touches people, she can take their energy, their life, and it just immediately kills them. So she is scared of touching people. And so in the first book, she's in this asylum and she meets Adam. And he is the initial love interest. Because she's afraid to touch people. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want to hurt anybody. So when she gets to a mega point, it's really difficult for her to form any bond with the people already there. Because she thinks that they already see her as a monster. Because that's how she views herself. Yes. And so it is a beautiful thing. If I may say so myself. When she does form bonds with the people there. And and she starts caring about them. And more so, I was kind of nervous that she would only form a bond with Adam. Because a lot of the times in YA stories, the characters only care about the love interest, right? Yeah. Which I get it. If you only want to focus on the romance, that's a plus. Mm -hmm. At least sometimes it is for me. But I did really like that she had to break away from Adam and, you know, the comfort that he gave her. And she actually had to form bonds with other people. Mm. And so she doesn't want to hurt anyone. But what I really appreciated, and if I may already say, this is a little ahead. Oh. I did really love that she gradually comes to terms with the fact that in a war, sometimes you do have to hurt people. And yeah. so she realizes, you know what? Anderson, who is leading the reestablishment, I have to kill him because that's going to be the greater good. Yeah. So I really liked her character a lot. Damn, dude. I would have to agree with you. I think Julia was handled very well in this book. Mm -hmm. She was characterized very well, did not change much from the first book because there are some books that when it goes to the second book, it's like there are two different characters. Yeah. But, you know, her trauma that she has dealt with continued on into this book. And it hurts, but I really like that they added to the fact that some people don't even know how to deal with her trauma. So they're in the middle of a war, but... They're not going to give her the time of day to deal with her emotions. And it sucks, but that's how it is during a war. Yeah, it's like they're not coddling her. Exactly. They're expecting so much out of her and she's doing her best. But, you know, she is still going to struggle. She is flawed, but I think she's a very good main character for this book. Mm -hmm. And I do love that one of the other characters is like, yeah, you've been through a lot, but we've all been through a lot. So mm -hmm. I need you to get it together and realize that we need to take down the reestablishment before they kill us. Yeah, which I think was a very good moment of character development for her. Mm -hmm. To see that, you know, there are more people in this world that will understand you. Mm -hmm. Love Juliet. So do I. I love her character. I love how she developed to it. I thought it was very realistic. Mm -hmm. Who do you want to talk about next? Should we talk about Kenji? Kenji. So you really liked Kenji in the first book, which is so I funny because I didn't develop an attachment to him in the first book, mm. but you did. I did. And in the second book, he is the person who ends up training with Juliet yeah. because he's not afraid of her. He's not afraid to touch her or anything. Well, he's not going to touch her, but you know, he's not afraid of that. Mm. And he also is like the comedic relief, yeah. but the kind of comedic relief where you know there's something deeper going on with him. Yeah. And he has this attachment with Castle, who is the main person in the Omega Point. And it's so different, especially c comparing to Juliet, who is new there, how he deems Castle with like a high importance. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so he's like, I'll do anything for Castle because he's always right. But I also really like just the relationship that he forms with Juliet. It's almost like siblings. I do I love it. Mm -hmm. I will add on to that and say that, I mean, I don't know if this is a surprise to you, but I also love Kenji. <laughs> I already knew you loved Kenji. <laughs> I love the fact that out of all the characters in this book, mm -hmm. he's the only one who does not dictate the way he feels about her based on her power. That's because true. If you think about it, everyone does that. Mm -hmm. Even the two main love interests, they will do that. They 
the way they feel about her is really swayed by her power. Mm -hmm. But for him, it's more so the fact that, hey, you're a good person. And I know that you can do better. Mm -hmm. So I love that he is kind of like a voice of reason to her, but also like a comfort place. Yeah. When things are happening. I agree. And you know what else I really liked about Kenji? Mm. He doesn't want to see her in a malicious way. Yeah. But there is a moment near the beginning when he's first starting to get to know her. And Juliet is really antsy about everything because she doesn't really trust Omega Point just yet. Yeah. And he starts to ask her like, are you are you here to destroy us? Because now I'm not so sure. I <laughs> thought that was really realistic that he yeah. would start to think maybe maybe she's not here for a good reason. Yeah. But he didn't do it in a way that would hurt her. He just wanted to have an honest conversation with he her. He did it like Kenji. Yeah, I love his character. Living like Kenji. I love his character. He's so funny too. And he's so good. He cares so much. Mm-hmm. Next character. Who? Let's talk about Adam. Adam's character. Okay. So in the first book, Adam was... We could both agree. We okay. both really liked Adam in the first book. I don't know how you feel about him in the second one. Okay. But in the first book, I really appreciated that he did that gesture for her. Mm-hmm. All Juliet had in the asylum was a notebook, and that's the only place that she was able to you know, unleash all of her inner demons. That's where all of her inner thoughts were, and she was completely raw. Like, she would say things just to get them out of her chest. And yeah. remember, she was really alone for about a year, alone with her thoughts. And so Adam managed to get this notebook for her and then later on give it to her. Mm-hmm. She did end up losing it again, but that's not the point. So Adam was a really good character. And the only reason why he was even a part of the reestablishment was to save her and to get her out. Mm-hmm. But in the second book, Adam's character does change a little bit he is more so how do i describe this um whiny he's a little whiny Mm. moody is the word that kenji used which is so funny because when i started reading this book i highlighted the part where kenji was like he's so moody to juliet he was telling juliet that and i was like you know what kenji maybe you're moody have you thought about that call him out i was like you know what adam it has a right to be moody because Mm -hmm. He was able to touch Juliet, but then we quickly find out that it's because he has this ability to deactivate people's powers, but he can't control it. So when his defenses are low and he starts becoming comfortable with Juliet, Mm -hmm. that's when she is able to hurt him. Yes. So because of that, Adam is going through this turmoil where he's like, I really want to be with Juliet. She's hurting me, but I still really want to be with her. And Juliet, as soon as she realizes that she's hurting Adam, she's like, no, nope. I can't do this anymore. I literally do not want to hurt you. You above all people. No, I don't want to do this. But there are times where he's like trying to convince her. So they do go through this like back and forth where they're not together, but then there's they have a moment, but then again, they're not together because she does hurt him. Yeah. How did you feel about Adam's character in this book specifically? Well, can I say first mm. that after reading this book, the way I felt about him in the first one changed. You did? I you think, saw him differently? I think that after seeing the first book again, because I actually had both books when I was reading this one. Oh my gosh, she was going back and forth, no, back I was and forth. Referencing, I was referencing <laughs> shit. Uh Um, after checking both of them, I think that he was a pretty bland character in the first one. Oh. He really only was there to be like, Julia, do you need something? Do you need need something? Because he loved her. Okay, that's fine. But he really had... What, not much going for him? Yeah. Okay. Not not really much. He cared about his brother, James. His little brother. Who the fuck is James? You know, I I don't really care about that bitch. Sorry, that little boy. But also... Okay, I didn't say it, you did. I'm not the the one getting cancelled. You are. (laughs) It's okay, we'll film the apology video together. Okay, video. video. (laughs) Anyway, I don't think I like Adam. What? I... I thought you would be team Adam. The thing I don't like about him... Go ahead. Let it out. Let your truth out. Okay. (laughs) It's the fact that 
he just became a whiny bitch. And so you agreed with Kenji. He was moody. He was moody, but it was even worse than that. He had no redeeming qualities. And I feel like Tahere Mafi was trying to, you know, mm. I feel like the author was trying to kind of push like, oh, love triangle. But there's no love triangle if I one of the characters, disagree. if one of the characters, <laughs> I'm talking. I feel like there's no love triangles if one of the characters is irredeemable. I can't. He I is can't. not irredeemable, though. He is re- irredeemable. He's boring. He has nothing I care about. And he's just... He <laughs> doesn't even grow. He's just there to whine like, that's my dad. I'm sad. <laughs> I hurt. Go to sleep, bitch. Like, I can't with him. It's I'm so, so funny tired of him. Because I feel like he does have something to his character because Juliet does love him in this book. She's never touched anyone. Uh, you know, so she's it's touched me, my heart. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> she hasn't she hasn't wait, she hasn't touched anyone. <laughs> so of course she's going to love him. Okay. She hasn't had this affection with anyone before. I just don't like the fact that uh, he he kind of just like, I love you so much. What the fuck do I do? And it's like, she's dealing with trauma, bitch. Don't even talk to me about that shit because you haven't had to deal with that. I know he's had to deal with a lot in his life, but I don't care. I do not like Adam. Whoa, yeah. the strong words from Jelly. Thank you. Wait, what did I say you would rate this? No, I, <laughs> maybe now I should go higher. <laughs> Wait, just to clarify, you do like Adam. I do like Adam. For, yeah. the, for the most part, I do like Adam. I feel, feel, I feel for Adam because I feel bad for him that he and Juliet had this love story And now he can't touch her anymore. So she's just like, well, now we can't be together. But what I did Mm -hmm. like about that whole situation is that it forces her to become close to everybody else. Yes. Because now she can't rely on him and his touch. Yeah, I agree. But I did feel really bad for Adam. Well, that makes one of us. (laughs) You didn't feel bad for him at all? No. Poor Adam. But we'll talk. He saved her journal. That means nothing to you now? Not really. Let me just say, though, let me just say that I have more to say about him when we talk about the relationship between the characters. Okay, great. Oh, my God, I love that. Okay, okay, I'm excited. I'm excited. Okay, Okay, so should we move on to the next character? Yeah. Let's talk about Castle. Uh, Don't do me. Okay, fine. Let's talk about this bitch. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Castle, man, hate him. Go ahead. You go. I can't. I can't believe you hate him. <laughs> Wait, I don't hate Castle. Okay, okay, okay. Castle's the guy who's in charge of Omega Point. Uh, he's he's a complex character, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it's interesting to see him. He, but why don't you we... seen you seen X Men? Professor X. Thank you. Oh my gosh! Good job. <laughs> but you know you're teasing me. Okay, Who are we going to talk about? Let's next? talk about Warner. Okay. Yes. It's so funny because I remember reading Shatter Me, and you liked Warner more than I did. I did. I didn't even realize that Warner was like a potential, like actual love interest. Because in these types of books, I always feel like whoever is introduced first, that's end game. That's end game right there. So I didn't want to get attached to Warner, even though I did find his character interesting. He was. I was like, mm, I'm not even gonna go there because all that's gonna happen is my heart's gonna break, and I don't want that. Okay. But then I read this book, and I was like, wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. What's happening? What's happening? Why is my heart skipping a beat? Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> so Warner is the morally gray character that Chelly mentioned when she guessed my rating. And he is working for the reestablishment. And he actually had Juliet prisoner in the first book. But remember in this book, the relationship between him and his father paris anderson is really highlighted so you really get to understand why he is the way that he is and why he's even on the reestablishment side Mm. but his relationship with julia is interesting because even from the moment that he met her he was like girl i know you want to hurt some people like just just let it go just be the bad bitch you are be the baddie that i know that you are Mm -hmm. just do it So it's interesting because a lot of their moments, you start to realize that they have a lot of similarities. Yeah. But the difference is that Warner actually caved in to this quote unquote dark side, right? And he's trying to tell her like, it's okay if you want to. And 
I won't blame you if you do. And that's when Julia starts to realize, like, I mean, maybe, maybe I will actually yeah. start hurting people by yeah. the end of the story. Yes. Or this book. But how did you feel about Warner? Wait, so you do like Warner? I love Warner. I think it's obvious. Okay. You literally said it in the thing. In the when you guessed my my rating, I do love morally great characters. Anytime Warner was on screen, I was like, "Bitch, that's my boy." I know. I know. I don't even know what part I was like completely swayed. I can't even remember. But oh, I think I remember actually. I do too. It was the part where he was prisoner. And she showed up because Castle was like, you gotta, you gotta interrogate him, okay? And she showed up and he was in his underwear and he was like, girl, let me put on a shirt first before you start asking me questions. And just like that whole conversation. Yeah. And w- and we can go more in depth when we talk later. about it. We can talk about it later. But I, that whole section I really loved and I really love Warner's character. Okay. But go ahead and tell me how much you love him. <laughs> Um, I mean, if you don't like Adam, are you going to tell me you hate Warner too? <laughs> so the thing about Warner... The thing about Warner is that you really liked him in the first book, <laughs> but the second book... Okay, no, 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 no. You did. He, okay. You okay. liked him more than You're I did. You're putting words in my mouth. Okay. You liked him more than I did. I just want to say mm. that when I read the first book, I was Adam Stan. I was an Adam Stan. I did like Warner, and I liked the potential of him being in a love interest. Can I just say, I also forgot that they... That Julia and Warner kissed in the first. How did you forget that? That was so iconic. (laughs) He literally kissed her and she shot him. Love. (laughs) That's love. (laughs) Anyway, I forgot about that. Mm. Reading Mm. this book now, I do like Warner, but I hate how quick he was to change in this book. I felt like when he was in prison and he was like, baby, I love you so much. That's how it felt. That's how it felt. I was not down for that. I was at some points because there were some really good points when he was prisoner. Mm. But I just felt like I I wish he was explained more. I wish he wasn't just thrown in and like, he's a love interest now. He's here now. And uh, can I tell you a scene that I hated with him? Mm. The scene with the puppy. You didn't like that scene? I didn't like that scene. Why? Because it's very like, how am I going to feel about Warner? Wait, he's holding a puppy? He can't be a bad guy. But he did it because he didn't see anybody around him. He didn't do it in a way that was like, oh, well, let me show her that I'm a good guy. No, I know that. But that's such a like, ugh, trope. Because that's in everything. Cute guy saving a cat that's in a box? (laughs) <laughs> maybe he's not so bad after all but let me say mm. out of all three characters Juliet's queen on top second would be warner second for me would be warner what? where's kenji not... hold on wait. Oh, wait oh my god i'm so sorry wait hold Apology on apology video <laughs> queen Juliet, kenji but like right below kenji like really close below kenji is warner I'm confused. So, the, Wait, so I, no, do you like him or not like him? I do like him. I just feel like his pacing in this book wasn't good. That's mm. what that's what made me angry. Mm. And it is a slow burn, though. Did not feel like it. You literally <laughs> said it was a slow burn. No, it is. It is a slow burn, but it did not feel like it. I just feel like mm. the writing in this book, which we can talk about later, I'm not a fan of. Mm. So it kind of threw me off. Do like Warner though. So don't get me. Don't get it twist. <laughs> don't get it. Twist. <laughs> I do like Warner. Okay. It's a little confusing, but okay, I respect that. Thank you. I respect that. Any other character that you think we should discuss? I I think we're good. Why don't we talk more about the relationships in this book? I want to start with Adam and Juliet. Okay, go ahead. You can start. Because apparently Adam is just a whiny bitch boy, according to Chelly. The thing is, though, not me. That's Chelly. The thing is, I didn't want that for him. I, I wanted him to be better. I did. <laughs> uh-huh. But every time they had a moment, he just felt needy, and he was like, they were, you know, because they couldn't Young see each other. Love <laughs> will do that to you. Okay, you okay. be feeling needy. Okay, but okay, because. 
they couldn't see each other. They had to be in their own respective dorms separated by gender. Yeah. And he would go into her dorm sometimes and they would just kind of like cuddle. Fuck around, you know? They just yeah. cuddle, okay? Just cuddle. And kiss. So, I mean, and Jesus doesn't know, but they would kiss. <laughs> they would lock lips sometimes. <laughs> anyway, I just hated the fact that he was like, oh, I fucking want you so much, bitch. I want you so much. I felt bad for him because I, I knew how much it affected him. Mm. But at one point, it was like, you have to understand that Juliet's going through trauma too. Mm-hmm. Like, you out of everyone, out of everyone should understand that more. Mm-hmm. So it just, I did not like it. And the fact that he showed up to lunch when she was eating with Kenji, just completely disheveled. I feel so bad for him. I do, because he was experimented on in order to see how Juliet is affecting him or vice versa. Mm -hmm. I understand that. But I just felt like... (sighs) Adam... You just take, say, just say what you want to say. He needs to take a minute for himself. Think about yourself. Your character should not revolve around one character. Juliet. I did not. I did not want him to be that because he was so strong in the first one. Mm-hmm. That's what I wanted him to be, mm-hmm. but he wasn't. He's just, dare I say, a simp. <laughs> <laughs> there, I said it. I've been holding it. A simp. What's wrong with being a simp? He's a simp. He has no personality. What's wrong with being a simp? Because he's just like, oh, baby. What's wrong with being a simp? He has no personality. He does. What's his personality? Three words. (laughs) Three describing words. This is his icebreaker. It's his first day of middle school. Oh, my God. And they're asking him, Adam, Adam, Adam boy. Adam boy. What are three words that describe you? Go. Soldier. That's not a description. Yes, it is. Oh, shh. (laughs) My turn. Go, 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 go. Okay, so soldier. One. Older brother, two. <laughs> provider, three. <laughs> and provider is emotional and physical, okay? Okay, so you're telling me, first day of middle school, he's in Miss Hendricks' class. <laughs> Who's and Miss he, Hendricks? Okay, he's in Miss Hendricks' class. Who's and he Miss walks, Hendricks? He walks in. It's part of the scenario. <laughs> so he's in Miss Hendricks' class, and he walks in, and he's like, uh, 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 hi, I'm Adam. And it's like, oh, Adam, can you please tell us three adjectives to describe you? I'm soldier. I'm soldier. I'm a soldier. No, he's I'm soldier. And a it's like oh, okay, he's soldier. I um I forgot the second one. <laughs> forgot the second one. Wait, can you give me a hint? <laughs> second older brother. Yes. Second older brother. And it's like, okay, okay, that's a good I don't know how you're a soldier, you're in middle school, but okay, older brother. A soldier. Third, third? provider. Provider. And it's like, okay, you're in physical middle- <laughs> You're in middle school. What you're the fuck are you providing? The you're- point seven led to the rest of the class. Okay, thanks, bitch. You have no redeeming quality. You're forgetting that if this is a dystopian book. There are many young characters mm. who are mm. providers. Okay. But I want him to be something. He is something. No, he's not. He's a flat ass character. He turns around. No cake. <laughs> flat. He is nothing to me. <laughs> flat he's not super round but he's not flat i don't know just you know when he turns around i don't see any dumpy i see a dumpy just so you know dumpy is in his heart but i think that his relationship with juliet i just wish it mattered more to me because i did not care about his relationship with juliet at all i i knew they weren't gonna end up together after she after she kept going like kissing adam but warner 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 you know, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so like, she would be like, I just can't get Warner out of my mind. But it was in, in a romantic way. No, I know that, but I, you can tell. You can know, you? I, yes, you couldn't. I don't know. No comment. I, <laughs> I just thought that I, it would have been more impactful if he was developed more. Yeah. Okay. I can respect that. Thank you. I disagree, but I can respect that. I can respect that your opinion is wrong, but it's fine with me. I can respect that your opinion of my opinion is wrong. <laughs> well, I can respect that your opinion of my opinion of your opinion is okay, wrong. Okay, yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm getting a headache. <laughs> okay. Just trying to do that little loop-de-boop. What about... Okay, can I say how I felt? Because... No. You really skipped me. 
Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, so I did really feel for both Julia and Adam because, like I already said, at first, everything was fine. He could touch her. It was cool. It was chill. But then all of a sudden, they both realized that touching her is gradually affecting his health. Yes. And he was totally like, babe, no, like, I still want to touch you. I don't care if it kills me. It kills me. Mm -hmm. It's whatever. Mm -hmm. And Juliet was just like, no, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. But then he tries to convince her like, well, I'll figure it out so that I can control it so that I can turn it on and off so that I can touch you without any consequences. Yeah. Those moments, especially the moment where Castle has the conversation with both of them, I felt so bad for Adam because yeah. he really wanted to make it work. And they ended up kissing and they ended up trying to forget that he shouldn't touch her. And it ends up with hurting him. It really hurts him after that. And after it really hurts him, that's when Julia is like, mm, no, I can't do yeah. this anymore. But Adam is still trying. And I just really love how much they care about each other. Okay. I mean, I agree with you. I wish there was a little bit more to him. But at the same time, this is Juliet's story, okay? Not his. Okay. Juliet's. Okay. Okay. I respect that. So what relationship do you want to talk about next? Let's talk about Julia and Kenji. How did you feel about Juliet's relationship with Kenji? I felt like he was the realest character to her in this entire thing. Because Castle wants her for her power. Adam just wants to love her. But like, just like, baby, you know? Maybe. Warner what also... Babe? Which, ba which episode did we do that on? <laughs> babe? We were both like... May. What was that? I don't remember, but it Go was Go ahead and so, look for it. It was so funny. <laughs> anyway, that was Adam. And then Warner, too, loves her, but for her power and what she has. Mm. Kenji is the one that's like, I'm going to be real with you. Kind of being a little bitch right now, but I respect you. And I know that you're going through a lot, but you need to focus on what we're doing. I love that about him. Mm -hmm. He was the one who I felt helped her grow as a character more than anyone did in this book. Yeah, I agree. I love Kenji. I love him. I've seen fan art of him. That boy's fucking hot. <laughs> so I just, I wanted to say that. You're like, I just need to get that off my chest. Mm -hmm. I just love how he's so funny. Like, he's such a funny character. There's a part where he's like telling Adam, bro, you're just a little moody sometimes. Yeah. And Adam's like, I'm not moody. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, bro, you are moody. It's always shut up, Kenji. Go to sleep, Kenji. No one wants to see you naked, Kenji. <laughs> when I know for a fact that there are thousands of people who would love to see me naked. And he's just <laughs> so funny. And he's so quick, too. And I love how much his relationship with Juliet progresses in this book. Mm -hmm. At first, I'm not really sure where they were going, right? Because she can't touch him and she shouldn't touch him because it can kill him. But just seeing how he didn't really let that affect how he viewed her, it really meant a lot to me. And I thought their relationship was honestly probably like the best relationship in, in this, this book. book. I do like one scene with Kenji and Juliet, which was when they were out, I guess, in the town. Oh, yeah. And Brendan, which is another guy who is part of the reestablishment, mm -hmm. or sorry, not the reestablishment, which is part of the Omega Point mm -hmm. members. He was talking to Juliet and he was like, oh, mm -hmm. I, kinda, I kinda, I'm down for this. And Kenji's like, don't even fucking think about it, man. Yeah. <laughs> what you're thinking? Stop. No. No more. You know what? This, disgusting. This girl, she has enough love interest, okay? <laughs> and one of them is Warner. You don't want to try that. <laughs> Who's heard of a love square? You know? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Reverse harem. <laughs> I also love that Juliet realizes that there's more to Kenji than he has let out in this book. She realizes, like, there is something in his eyes that I know that he's been through a lot, even though he's not telling us, or at least telling her. Mm -hmm. And I also like his mindset. There's a moment where they have to go to, like, the outside world, and they have to be really careful, by the way. When they get out of their sanctuary of Omega Point and they're outside where the reestablishment can find them and possibly stop them and ask them questions, he tells Juliet, the world is going to hell out there and 
And I suppose if I'm going to be shot dead before I'm 25, I'd at least like to remember what it's like to laugh before I do. And so he's like, he's just telling her, like, I'm here and I at least need to make the best of this situation because our odds not in our favor. Yeah. Oh, I just love how realistic he is as a character. He's a good character. He's an amazing character. So why don't we talk about the relationship between Juliet and Warner? Well, already? Yeah. I don't know if I'm ready. Okay, we don't Wait, have to. Wait, how about you start? Can you start? I want to I wanna know from your perspective only because you haven't read the other books. Okay, so I need... Go ahead and start. I need to find some parts, though, so I might pause a little. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. That's fine. So Warner and Juliet... I did not expect this book to be the way it was Mm -hmm. because Warner is taken prisoner in this book and he is basically staying at Omega Point in a room and... Wait, before you say, before you continue, can I just quickly explain what happened? Sure. So pretty much Juliet ends up meeting with Paris Anderson, which is Warner and Adam's dad. Because mm-hmm. Anderson realizes, like, oh, my God, somehow she managed to shoot my son? What? So he wants to meet her. And both Kenji and Adam are hiding close by. And Juliet has a moment where she witnesses Anderson abuse Warner in front of her. And it makes her react. And so she ends up hurting Anderson. Yeah. And after that whole situation happens, Kenji and Adam show up. And I think Kenji hurts Warner enough to knock him out. And that's when they take Warner prisoner because they think, oh, obviously he must mean a lot to Paris Anderson. So he is going to want him back because Anderson has taken two very important people from Omega Point hostage. Yes. So they think that they can do a trade. Yes. So go ahead and explain about him being prisoner. So Warner and Juliet, when he's taken prisoner and taken to Omega Point, their relationship was a shock to me. Because I did know by the end of the first book, he did have feelings for her. Mm -hmm. They kissed. But it never really explained why he had feelings for her Mm -hmm. until they see each other in the prison for the first time because everyone is like juliet why don't you interrogate him because he can't fucking touch you yeah they don't know that he can touch her so why don't you go in there because you know (laughs) you know what's gonna happen and she's like all right she doesn't want to i guess she doesn't want to tell anybody that warner can touch her no and is there no cameras in here no that's so stupid why i just thought you know you want to see warner naked no, I just thought that they wouldn't trust her, so they would put cameras, but I guess not. So <laughs> They're on the outside. <laughs> the thing is, though, he was completely different from what I expected because he actually took her journal. So he had read sections of her journal, and there was a point... <gasps> and he had them memorized! There was a point where, where he was reading a section, and she was like, you need to stop. You need to fucking stop. I can't listen to this. And he, but why do I care? <laughs> 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 He puts the journal down and he starts reciting it word for he word. He does. And he says a quote, if I can read it. He says, you know, I couldn't sleep for days after I had read that entry. I kept wanting to know which people were chasing you down the street, who it says you were running from. I wanted to find them and I wanted to rip their limbs off one by one. I wanted to murder them in ways that would horrify you to hear. And it's like, God fucking damn. Mm-hmm. But he... He's a morally great character. Of course, he's going to think like this. But God damn, Mm -hmm. he fucking loves her. Mm -hmm. And he even gives her pet names. Like anytime she comes in, he's like, oh, hi, love. Hey, love. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, I'm naked, but on purpose. I'm naked, but like, don't look. Don't look, but look. My nipple is out. Yeah, (laughs) my nippy. (laughs) But you can look. (laughs) You can look, I guess, maybe. And I just thought that it was very interesting that it happened so quick. Don't get me wrong. I'm here for it. It felt slow to me. It just, it went too fast for me. Mm. And honestly, it went too slow for me. I don't get it. Funny. Their relationship was really complex, but I did want to mention something, and it's a quote that I feel like connects both of them. Mm. And it's the Shakespeare quote that he has on, his tattooed on him, <laughs> on, his, on his big old dumpy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, right in the middle of his dumpy. <laughs> He has, it's near his like lower hip. Mm -hmm. It says, hell is empty and all the devils are here. And it 
Ugh. I love that quote. I love that quote too. And I feel like Especially it Especially for the world that they live in. Yeah, exactly. And mostly for both of them. Mm-hmm. They've been through so much shit. And even though their lives are completely different, they're very similar. Mm-hmm. So I think that their relationship next to Kenji and Juliet, I think their relationship is one of the most interesting <laughs> ones. I just wish it didn't move so fast. Mm, I disagree. I don't think it moved that fast. Okay. Well, you can be wrong, but it's fine. What I really liked about their relationship was that Warner isn't stupid. No. And even though he plays it up when she's initially interrogating him. And remember, at first, she's like kind of not really down when Castle is like, you got to interrogate him because you can't, he can't touch you. So that's it. That's all that there is to it. Go. And so she does it. And at first, she doesn't really want to. But when they start talking to each other, She'll ask him questions, but then he'll divert the conversation and they'll start talking about interests, like likes, things that they enjoy. Yeah. And he'll start asking her about favorite stories, yes. favorite books, you know, just that sort of thing. And I really love that this goes on long enough where she starts to realize that if she were to ever make a mistake, would the people in my life forgive me enough to take me back? Yeah. Because Warner is someone who has made many mistakes. And so she starts to realize, I think the only person who might accept me, if I were to make a mistake, it would be Warner. Yeah. Because not to go back into detail with Adam too much, but Adam and Warner see her in completely opposite ways. Adam only wants to see the best in Juliet, that she can never make any mistake. She Mm -hmm. doesn't want to hurt anybody. While Warner is like, I mean, if you make a mistake, you make a mistake. It's okay. (laughs) You know, we all make mistakes, Julie. And so what I really liked about their interactions was that he went along with it. And then finally, when she was going to get, you know, the piece of information that she needed, he was like, I'm not stupid, Juliet. I know why you're here. You're here against your will. So you know what? I'm going to tell you what you want to know because my vacation is over. (laughs) And so he was like, it's been fun. You know, this has been different. Me being in prison, I don't have, you know, all these responsibilities. Because remember, he is a leader to the reestablishment. So he did tell her, like, this was a nice break. But now, it's done. It's time for me to go. Mm -hmm. So overall, did you like the relationship? I did. I really loved their relationship. But I didn't think they moved that fast. Because my brain cell was still unsure. I wasn't, (laughs) like, I wasn't sure... Okay. Who I was supposed to root for hmm. when I first read it. Remember, I first read the second book when we finished the the Shatter Me episode. And I didn't see anything on TikTok yet. Damn. I, my, thanks to someone in this table who I do not want to mention, I was hella spoiled for the end of the entire series. You're welcome. So Don't say it until we get there. No, I know, I know. If I know. we ever get there. Okay. But I oh. did, I did want to mention... All right, I wanted to ask you because you know I really value your opinion. You do? How did you feel? How did you feel about what when Warner snuck into Juliet's room and they were making out? <gasps> oh my god, that scene! And oh my god. Warner, while making out with her, <gasps> Don't Juliet me. says, "Adam, <laughs> dude, I literally." I had to put my tablet down. I had to pause everything. I sat there with my thoughts. And I was like, did that? Did that really happen? I was stressed and depressed. Juliet would literally think about Adam all the time. Mm -hmm. And even though she did enjoy Warner's company, Warner's thoughts, Warner's whatever, and anything with Warner she did enjoy. But then eventually afterwards, she would still be like, "Mm, Adam... Adam, wait. Adam. 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 (laughs) So before I explain that scene, Warner does end up telling her like, you know what? I'm going to bounce. I got to go. I got to go. But he does come back because he wants her to go with him. He wants her to be by his side. Doing what? I'm not entirely sure right now. I'm a little drunk. (laughs) And so... They end up making out, and it's like a heavy makeout yeah, session. It is. It's God like, damn, they were about to have sex. Like, it was God, a lot. My God, the clothes about to slip off. And so, when this is happening, Juliet has a moment of realization like, wait, I can't do this to Adam. I feel bad. Yeah. Adam, my boy, my guy. Yeah. 
Yeah. I can't do that to him. And so she says audibly Adam's name. And Warner, did you notice that Warner was like completely scared? Like he was like, oh my God, wait, wait, are you, are you picturing Adam right now? And so I felt so bad for Warner. That whole scene was just heartbreak after heartbreak. I felt bad for him. But can I also say to add on to that? Because I agree with everything you said. Thank you. To add on to that. Fuck Adam for that scene where when everyone figured out that Juliet can touch Warner, he was like, well, what have you been doing with him? Touching him. Duh. Touching him? Loving him? Maybe his shoulder? Maybe his his hand? His nipple? Heart? (laughs) No. Nipple nipple second, but heart first? (laughs) No, actually nipple first because I don't. (laughs) But I hated that he said that. I but, think, but I get it, though, because remember, in the first book, Warner did torture Adam. So he does have this hatred towards him. And true. also, just because they share a dad, a zaddy, doesn't mean that they're going to be besties now. He does still have this animosity towards Warner. Mm-hmm. And he's like, maybe we should kill him. I don't know. Just a thought. Yeah. So even when that whole scene was happening, he was still... If anything, it made him more pissed off. Mm-hmm. God, I fucking love, though, when Warner and Adam would crash into each other and Warner would be like, what's this bitch doing here? What's this, what is this bitch doing What is here? this whiny ass bitch doing? Oh, my God. The parts <sighs> where Warner would make fun of Adam and tell him, yeah, well, I don't have to beg Juliet for her love. I would never stoop that low. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Which he didn't beg her when no. he tried to ask her if she would go with him mm-hmm. when that whole kiss happened. He didn't beg her. Nope. He was he kind of not. just like, do you want to go? Oh, you don't? Okay. Well, oh, well, that's that's fine. Well, wait. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll leave. But I mean, are, are, are you at the door? He's like, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are okay. you, wait, I have two tickets. Though. Oh, wait. I'll just leave one ticket here. I have your luggage. <laughs> <laughs> How did you feel to tie in with Juliet and Warner? How did you feel about Warner's power? Because both Adam and Warner have separate abilities. Mm-hmm. Like we already said, Adam's ability is that he can deactivate people's power, but he doesn't know how to control it yet. But Warner's ability is he can deactivate powers, but he can also read. He can. Yeah, he can. <laughs> well, he doesn't feel them, right? <laughs> Isn't that the thing? Deactivating is Adam's. And Warner's is can't feel. Conceal, no. don't feel. Mm-hmm. But why can't he feel Juliet? Wait, I didn't read the same book. Why can't he feel, <laughs> why can't he feel Juliet's power? Uh, if he it's like he's feeding off of it oh, oh he can take on people's power yeah so like it's like he can steal that's your power. why he hurt kenji that yeah. one time like we don't talk about that right now okay whatever we'll skip so, that okay but warner's power is more so he can first of all read people's emotions mm-hmm. but also take other people's powers mm-hmm. if he's touching them yeah so it's a lot mm-hmm. it's a lot i thought his power was really interesting though mm-hmm. explains why he's such a good leader because he can fucking read the room bitch he can read so. the room and it explains why he's such an angsty person or at least what's the word cynical cynical there you go exactly oh word of the day <laughs> is because he knows how everybody feels about him mm-hmm. and that makes perfect sense and he didn't actually know that he had these powers until like midway through <sighs> which kind of hurts because then he knows for certain that Juliet loves him. So it hurts with the fact when he's like, oh, it's pity. That's what you're feeling. Yeah. And he's hurt. like, I don't want to, I don't want you to feel pity for me. And he's like so offended that he's like, you know what? I'd rather you feel nothing. Mm-hmm. I'd, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really, I actually really loved his power. I did think that Adam's power was cool too. Like just that whole, like being able to deactivate someone's power was just an interesting thought. But the fact that Warner can take someone's power and use it himself, it's almost like I predicted this. I'm just saying. Did you? I don't know. Did I? I feel like I did. I, maybe. (laughs) Roll the tape. (laughs) I'm just kidding. I don't actually know. But I thought his power was really cool. And I really felt for him because remember, the reestablishment is made up of normies. Mm -hmm. They're not people with abilities Mm -hmm. unless they're being used. And so when he realized that he had a power, it really affected him. He was like, wait, I'm not a normal boy? What? Why didn't anybody tell me that? I mean, he just assumed that he just was able to read people really well. But when he realized, like, oh, no, I have a power, it really affected him. Okay. And I I don't want to move too far ahead. But we are, we've been talking for a while. Oh, we have. So I do, I do want to talk a little bit about the ending. 
Okay. So after Warner hears Juliet say Adam, she, Adam. he's like, okay, bitch. But, um, no, <laughs> he would no, he's never. Like, he's like, bitch. But love of my life. But love of my life. I can't believe you said that. I'm leaving without you. But do you want to go? But I'm leaving without. But um, but I'll be outside. <laughs> but I'll be outside for maybe five, ten, ten. hours max. <laughs> Fuck you. And he leaves. And the he thing never is, shows her any like hatred though. No, he doesn't. He doesn't, but he feels really bad. Mm-hmm. And he's like, this is why I don't love anyone. Because everyone pities me. So he basically leaves and circumstances happen. And Julia ends up back at Anderson's house, which is Warner's pop up. And Warner's Adam's. Pop-up. And Adam's pop up. Anyway, she And is, James, actually, now that we're mentioning it. Yeah, she is there. And Anderson is like, God, you're so fucking everywhere, bitch. <laughs> so you know what? You're such a nuisance. You know what? Bitch. Warner, War- Warney, baby. Warner, come here. Come, here. come, come over here. <laughs> Shot. Freaking Juliet's down. Down for the count. She's going to fucking die. But Anderson did it in front of Warner because he lives to hurt Warner. Fuck him. Yeah, fuck him. Wait, before we move on, before you even continue. Okay. How much did it hurt to read that part where anderson revealed to juliet that warner has been trying to kill him since he was 10 years old but every time he was about to pull the trigger he would he cry couldn't. he couldn't that he couldn't does do hurt it. that does hurt because oh my god it's like that unconditional love where it's like i fucking hate you but i can't fucking do it mm-hmm. it does hurt mm-hmm. so the fact that anderson was still able to pull shit like this in order to hurt warner and warner still can't kill him hurts but juliet is semi-conscious and she can hear warner telling the healers like you need to touch me and i can heal her i can do this the healers were in a mega point yes oh sarah and no but they came they were there too no yeah i'm just explaining that oh yeah the healers were from omega point but then they they end up being abducted and warner is like touch me bitch (laughs) i know so later juliet wakes up and she is in bed with warner right yeah. And Warner's like, baby, baby, love, love. No, no, love, no, 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 no. That's yes, no Yes, he is. Yes, because he's like, are you okay? Are you okay? He doesn't say baby love. He just says, are baby you okay? Baby love, mija? No. Maybe. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Wait. Maybe on the inside, he yeah. was like, baby love, my girl, love you. But he did care. You can tell he cared. Mm-hmm. He was like, are you all right? Are you all right? You you good? And how does the book end again? She just realizes, you know what, bitch? It's fucking war. When thinking about Anderson. Not Warner. And that's how the story ends. She realizes that, you know what? Maybe she should kill Andy. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Just a thought. Okay. So the way that this book ends matters because Juliet was not comfortable living with all of these, you know, other people without her gloves. So literally she... She... She basically says, you know what? This is fucking war, bitch. And I'm leaving my gloves behind. Exactly. I'm not going to fucking let these people use and abuse me. I'm going to fucking kill these bitches. Especially Anderson. Especially Anderson. So that's how the story ends. Which I thought made absolute sense for her character development. I am glad that she realized like you can't just be the nice person during war. And I do want to read the last section of this book. Just showing how much fucking rage she had about this situation. I'm living, breathing proof that nature is officially screwed, afraid of what it's done and what it's become. And I'm stronger. I'm angrier. I'm ready to do something I'll definitely regret. And this time, I don't care. I'm done being nice. I'm done being nervous. I'm not afraid of anything anymore. Mass chaos is in my future, and I'm leaving my gloves behind. Which is really significant to her entire story, because she felt so insecure without having her gloves on. Mm Mm-hmm. I absolutely love this ending. Can I say that? Can I say that already? I love this ending because I thought it just showed so much about her character. Mm-hmm. And I do want to mention, Warner does call him love. Or yeah. Warner does call Juliet love. I yeah. That's, the, that's Warner's pet name to Juliet is love. Because she's okay. his love. Okay, fine. Fine. It's fine. It's not a big deal, is it? I mean. A little bit. I don't know. We reached the end of the book. But how did you feel about the ending? I didn't mind it. I I am looking forward to reading the third one. 
<laughs> the thing is, can I mention something? And I don't want you to make a face. Oh, it's hard not to. I'm drunk. <laughs> okay, okay, but you got to look at me in the eyes. Okay, it's hard. Which After eye? sitting, this one. Okay. After sitting with Shatter Me for a while, I don't think I liked it as much as I let on the first time we filmed. The first book? Yeah. Mm, why? I just... <sighs> And I'll mention it with this book, too. I'm not a fan of the writing style. Really? I I like it to a certain extent. Mm. But I just feel like the dialogue is what gets me. It feels very unnatural at times. But it doesn't, like, it doesn't turn me off from continuing to read this book. Because mm. in general, I think Unravel Me was a very well-written book, story-wise. Mm-hmm. And I do want to read the third book. I didn't know how I felt about Warner and Adam being brothers. And I still don't know how I feel about it. Mm. But whatever. She's here to stay. You know, I've talked about this before. I freaking hate stories when they pit two brothers together. But how did you feel about this? I don't... I didn't really like that they made them brothers. Yeah. But, I mean, at the same time, I have to accept it. Because I can't change it. So I was like, you know what? Yep, it is what it is. It is what it is. It happened. It's here. And I just have to deal with it. Because I do really like this story. And I'm literally the opposite. I freaking love the writing. You know what else I really like about the writing? It's super poetic. That's why I looked at your book. Because I wanted to make sure that my ebook was not messed up. But there's literally like breaks in some paragraphs where the sentence isn't even over yet. But the next word continues in the next paragraph. And I love that because I think every pause really matters to what she's trying to convey in that moment. I respect that. I respect that. I do respect, too, that she adds to she adds to the desperation that Juliet's feeling by the repetitiveness of her thoughts. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes she'll just keep repeating like his lips, his lips. I'm feeling this, his lips, his lips. And it's like, damn, she has so much in her. Mm -hmm. I just don't think it's my type of writing i don't i'm not gonna tell or i'm not gonna say that she has horrible writing because she doesn't it's just not for me Mm. how did you feel about james and juliet the baby boy Mm -hmm, the baby boy james was okay i don't really like him as a character he's just kind of he's a little boy he's a little boy but like i didn't care much for him i thought that scene was so cute where juliet was scared that james heard rumors about her and so his thoughts of her had been shifted because they hadn't seen each other in a while and he finally goes up to her and he's like how come he didn't tell me you killed somebody and she's like well i mean it was an accident he was like are you sure you didn't mean to do it you promised and she's like no i didn't mean to do it and he was like okay i forgive you yeah He's such a little boy. He is such a little boy. I didn't think much of him. I like that he has the the power to heal, though. Like, regenerate. Yeah, that's cool. When he's hurt. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when Warner is a prisoner and Julia is trying to get info from him, you know, because she's trying to find out info about his dad and his plans regarding Omega Point, there is a moment after he shows her his tattoo with the hell is empty and all the devils are here, that moment... She starts asking him, why is the reestablishment burning all of the books? Like, how how can we thrive as a society that way, right? If you burn all of the books. And he tells her, books are easily destroyed, but words will live on as long as people can remember them. Tattoos, for example, are very hard to forget. I think there's something about the impertinence of life these days that makes it necessary to etch ink into our skin. It reminds us that we've all been marked by the world and we're still alive. That we'll never forget. And Mm. I just really liked that part because it reminded me of V for Vendetta. Do you remember when we watched that movie? I just love that whole notion of thoughts are bulletproof. I love that so much. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I saw it in this book, I was like, oh my God. Love. <laughs> Absolutely. 10 out of 10. Would read again. <laughs> Wait, I actually do have a comment to make. How do you feel about the covers of these books? Because the eyeballs? They say that eyes are the window to the soul. Mm. And if you notice, there's something in her eye in this book. Is there? Yeah. She's always wanted to be free, and it looks like a bird. Oh, wow. It does look like a bird. 
I actually really like these covers. Really? I didn't I didn't notice that before, the bird in her eye, but I think that's that's a good little detail. I I like the idea of it. I don't get it though. Like cuz some of the eyes they be different. So I don't get why her eyes are kind of like I icicles. think it's just supposed to be I don't know if you want to think about it any deeper than you have to. You know what I do really appreciate about Warner? What? He apologizes to her. He tells her that he's sorry for taking her journal, but he's like, I'm sorry that I can't apologize for being who I am. But he, I remember, I can't remember the second time, but I know he apologizes to her twice. Yeah. Because I highlighted both times, but I was like, the fact that he apologizes to her means a lot to me. (laughs) <laughs> and my emotional state. Thank you. Why don't we talk about our overall rating? Can you go first? <sighs> okay. So this book was a lot. Mm. I read it, by the way, in one sitting. Mm. I sat down and started at 9. That and sounds I finished, like a you problem. I finished at 4 a.m. because I needed to finish it. I needed to finish it. That's how I felt about this book. Uh. I will not change how I feel about Adam. I don't really care for him as a character, and I wanted to care for him. I hate that he became a little bitch. I don't really care for his brother, but... All of the Adam stands quaking. (laughs) But I do really like Warner, and I think that he went a little too fast in this book. I I wish I would have known more about him. Maybe even like a perspective book in Warner's eyes. I know that there there literally is. I know that there is novelas, but I don't think this book should have been written. Or I don't know. I don't know what, what should have been different, but I wish that Warner would have been developed differently. But overall, I did really enjoy reading this book. Mm. I will admit that if it weren't for the fact of this podcast, I don't think I would have read this book on my own. But now that we did read it, I am most likely going to read the third one and finish it. Because yes, I do want to see Yes, we ends. are. Yes, we, we are. <laughs> we haven't even read more of Shadow and Bone. Don't think I didn't notice that. <laughs> we can't. Okay. We have to wait till this season comes out on Netflix. Okay. Excuse us? Excuse we literally did Crooked Kingdom. <laughs> Hello? Don't yell at me. <laughs> Hello? Anyway. I did enjoy reading this book, and mm. I think I am going to rate it. Mm, that th- pause is long. I can't even open my eyes right now. <laughs> a 3.275. What? Out of five. You mean my 3.75 was not accurate? No. Damn. But I did really like it. But I did not really enough, like it. I don't so. think I would read it again. I really liked this book. Not my favorite in the series, though, but I did enjoy it. I really liked Juliet's development as a character. I did care about Adam and his poor heart because his heart matters, you know? It Mm -hmm. matters to me. Mm -hmm. And I really liked Juliet's relationships with Kenji, even with Castle. We didn't really talk about it much. We don't have to. I did like that relationship as well. And as well as, more importantly, her relationship with Warner, because they are so similar to each other. Honestly, I can't even tell you any dislikes. There are so many moments that I highlighted on here where I really loved the writing, like just the description. I'm glad you did. So I really liked so much of the writing. I think Tahara Mafi writes so beautifully. I am kind of jealous because I wish that I could write more poetic like she does. Mm. And even though she writes poetically, I still can picture everything that's happening, like, in the story. Like, there was no moment where I was like, what the hell am I looking at? I feel like I pictured every scene the way that she meant for it to happen. And, again, not my favorite in the series, but, like, still, still a love. I think I would give this book probably, like, a 4.89. That's basically 4.5. 4.9. Nine seven. That's four well, point. <laughs> I may be drunk, but I want to make a point that this isn't my favorite in the series. Okay, <laughs> but the fact that it's a four point nine seven, that's point zero three away from a five. Didn't I start with four point eight two five six two one? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, mm. okay. Like a four point eight rounded is five. <laughs> mm. I can't believe this why i just can't believe this what do you mean i knew you were gonna like it but 
I don't know. I I thought we were gonna have more in common. What do you did mean? you did you think this was gonna be my favorite read? Not even close. No. No. I didn't think you were gonna like this book. Why? I don't know. You're unpredictable, and I just felt it in my heart. She's probably not gonna like this book. No, my oh, heart. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I touched your boobs. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for all of you who are listening to us in audio form, like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, anywhere you get podcasts from. If you are listening to us, if you want to leave a review or rating, that would be hella. So, so nice. Like, so nice. Like, we really appreciate it. <laughs> like a rating, a five specifically, that'd be great. And if you want to share us to your friends, family, loved ones, hated ones, if you want to do that, go ahead, because the most exposure and the best exposure is through word of mouth. Mm-hmm. If you watch us through YouTube, thank you so much for watching. I hope you like, comment, and subscribe. Who team do you go for? Team Warner or Team Adam? Let me know. And if you want to hit that <laughs> notification bell, that would really help. Thank you so much. And also, we didn't mention this in our other episodes, but we are on social media. So if you wanted to see us on Instagram or TikTok... You can follow us on at story and things, S T O R Y N T H I N G S. Thank you. So, we are going to go ahead and move to the last part of our episode, which is always a dice roll. So, we roll a dice, and if it lands on an even number, we're going to read a positive review from Goodreads about this book. If it lands on an odd number, we're going to read a negative review. We usually just leave it in the air. Don't discuss it. It's just here. It's a thought. Yeah. We're not to connected. Leave off the episode with. We are not connected to this view whatsoever. So let's just see what we get. Our number's a four. Positive review. <laughs> Go ahead and read what you wrote. All right. So this review comes from The Burning Rose, Jess in parentheses. They rated it a five out of five on Goodreads. And they write, this book, this book shattered me i couldn't write a review for the first two days because i was speechless this book this world so abandoned so fucked up and still people continue to live in it i'm amazed at people's survival even if they are rebels even if they are soldiers even if they are just plain poor citizens who still manage to live through terror it amazes me i really enjoyed this book and i can't wait to go on to the next one thank you so much for listening and we will talk to you next time Bye. So is so is big name next? Like, is it next? <sighs> Only if we do all of the Shadow and Bone and Grishaverse books. I already told you we can't. No. <laughs> I don't agree with you. What are we doing on the same page? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> love, love that C minor. I don't know. No, I don't know music. Stop Charlie Poop. <laughs> Stop Charlie Poop. Twenty twenty two.